Okay, this is the full moon eclipse chart for June 5th, 2020. This is set for 3 p.m. in Washington, D.C. Um, at the time that the eclipse is exact, we will have 10 degrees Libra rising on the chart, uh, which is a minor consideration at this point for the horoscope. So this puts Venus uh, as the ruler of the chart. Venus will be combust the sun. That is an extremely uncomfortable position for any planet to be in, in particular Venus. Venus is a soft, um, graceful, receptive feminine planet, and it's in uh, under the uh, orbit, the much too close, uncomfortable orbit and domination of a hot, dry, fiery planet. So Venus is in a particularly weakened state on top of being retrograde at this time. So we can expect a whole lot more of nothing we're going to love or enjoy happening while this is occurring. So I'm not saying this to alarm you, but I am saying this because forewarned is forearmed. If you're prepared for it, it's a little bit easier to deal with it. Okay, so this full moon eclipse is occurring at 15 Sag, and the only aspect we're seeing here is a, a T-square to Mars and Neptune. So in theory, Sun the a full moon eclipse square making a T square to Mars Neptune could be a number of things. One of the things we could possibly look for, uh, because th this particular combination of aspects could lead to major flooding or poison, because Neptune and Pisces also rule poison, poison and water, um, which also in real life <laughs> typically go together, um, and gases. So with this particular combination, uh, we may be seeing major, major um, overwhelming flooding of things. So it's an excess of things, right? So it's excess of water like the tsunamis, um, excess of air like tornadoes and hurricanes, excess of, of earth like mudslides and avalanches. Um, this may be what we're looking at as this eclipse comes into effect. Now, for those of you who live in the U.S., it's important. We are going through a really tough time right now, and we're literally going through a, a crisis, social crisis, like we have not seen since the 60s. And organized, constructive social crisis. This, these protests are very important, and they're very restrained, all things considered. The thing to understand uh, is that just like the 60s, as we went through it, it led to constructive, positive social change because uh, it needed to happen. And unfortunately, that was the only way to get people to shift, right? And we're kind of going through the same thing now. So no putting the genie back in the bottle. So when we look at these, this pattern, this T-square pattern, right, we may also be thinking in terms of the protests and what's going on. It's groundswell of support and demand for justice and all sorts of things. Because, again, Pisces also rules, and Neptune also rules the scapegoat. Right and the victim, um, and this is clearly classically pictured with this T square. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that these are mutable bodied signs: Gemini, Sag, uh, Pisces, Virgo. All of these represent multiples, but in particular, in particular, Gemini and Pisces. So there are um, there are definitely some things we should be watching for in terms of forgery copycats, uh, du duplicitousness, uh, imposters, that's the word I'm looking for. We should definitely keep an eye out for imposters and also, uh, like poison, things that infiltrate and, and destroy from the inside out, like viruses and poisons. So viruses also, by the way, come under this as well. So big news and big events may be coming related to these things. We should, we should just be aware. We should just be aware and also take care of yourself as best you can. Now, while this eclipse is happening, one of the other things that we're looking at is Saturn is going to be squaring its own ruler, Uranus. Well, so let me rephrase that. Saturn is in Aquarius ruling its co-ruler, Uranus. Aquarius is ruled by both Saturn and Uranus. Saturn is the original ancient ruler before Uranus was discovered. And when you know Uranus came along, 
little hipster interloper that it is, <laughs> uh, we sort of assigned Uranus to Saturn and gave uh, Capricorn exclusive rights to Saturn. But it doesn't change the fact that the original ruler of Aquarius was Saturn. So Saturn and Uranus, these are both rulers of Aquarius. So this means that the sign of Aquarius, its rulers, both of them, are now in conflicted aspect with each other. And we've been feeling this since Saturn went into Aquarius, setting up that square Uranus. So it, this is not a new thing. However, it is amplified and, and certainly gives us an, an undertone, right, or an underlying theme with this particular eclipse. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot more discomfort and cutting your teeth sort of energy with this. Now, the thing about it is, you know, because we go through this a lot, especially this last year, um, with these major aspects, this, the other thing to remember is that squares and T-squares also mean action. So this is a brilliant time in terms of pushing the boulder out of the way. So we can turn that corner, make that change. We can make constructive, positive action occur in large, momentous ways, especially when we have such significant things as assigns co-rulers both in square with each other. So the push is on to make things happen and not make things happen like, oh, we've got to get from one day to the next, but make things happen in terms of major evolutionary shifts. And again, right now in the U.S., we're, while if you're, reading, if you're watching this video, you're seeing what's happening uh, and you've been living through it, we are, this is huge, right? But remember, we are one continent in an entire planet of continents. So these things are not necessarily new, and we have to put these aspects in the framework of an entire world of people who are having their own things happening. Um, so, for example, the Hong Kong protests, which have been going on long before this, are also uh, some examples of this evolutionary push for progress and to change the existing established order, right? So it's pretty interesting stuff. Now, Saturn, let's come back to Saturn for a second. Saturn is an Aquarius. So Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius, and this is going to be important, and I'm going to tell you why. Saturn retrograde in Aquarius means that at some point in the next month or so, or certainly this summer, at some point this summer, Saturn is going to retrograde back to Cancer. When Saturn goes back to Cancer, let's make that a little bit bigger for you. When Saturn goes back to Cancer, one of the things we talked about early on was it Saturn retrograding back into Cancer this summer? It's in the, the year ahead report. Um, it's going to give us a second chance. So one of the beauties of this retrograde is that we will have a second chance to go back and clean up any loose ends and do things better this time. So watch for Saturn to go back into Capricorn. When Saturn goes back into Capricorn, it's also going to get near these planets, Jupiter and Pluto. And remember, Jupiter and Pluto are the, the miracle makers. So Jupiter and Pluto together can make the impossible possible. Great, major, revolutionary events, once-in-a-lifetime occurrences, occur when you have this uh, combination of planets together. Now, naturally, once-in-a-lifetime events occur under a lot of different aspects. But this, in particular, is significant because this also represents the end of an epoch, right? Pluto's at 24 Capricorn is getting ready to leave Capricorn in um, muggly one years, but sooner rather than later. We're at the tail end of this sign, and Pluto represents generations, entire epochs, epochs of social development. Jupiter will be leaving Capricorn and entering Aquarius to join Saturn. When that occurs, everything shifts, right? One of the big challenges that we're looking at is automation and robotic uh, replacement of uh, work, basically labor, because this is about the efficiency, making large groups of things more manageable and efficient, and nothing's easier or more manageable to efficient than robots. Um, and that was covered in the last video. So we got that going on, and then let's, for right now, let's go back here. So Libra, uh, because this isn't confusing enough, Libra is also ruled by Saturn. So while Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus, ancient and modern ruler, Venus is ruled by Saturn and Venus, 
ancient and modern ruler. So we look at these two planets and take them into account as well. Now, Saturn is making a trine to Venus. Uh, luckily, it's a wide trine, so we're not really feeling it. And also, luckily, it is a trine, which is a supportive aspect. So we're not particularly worried about that. So, however, uh, it is still ruling the chart here in D.C. Saturn is squaring Uranus, continues to do so, and we are continuing to feel this. Until Saturn gets past this degree of Aquarius, or Aquarius, of Taurus, uh, where in the U.S. we're going to have nothing but problems. Venus, ruling Libra, right, and the chart center for this eclipse, is retrograde, which makes it weak, it is combust the sun, which makes it weaker. Um, so there's there's just nothing that's going to get resolved or fixed satisfactorily to for for anyone's benefit during this time until Venus gets to the other side of the sun and away from this degree, out of that those combust degrees. Now there is one day, June third, that I want you guys to watch. June third. Venus will have moved in to the heart of the sun. So Venus will be dead center in the sun and under the sun's protection on June 3rd. For those of you who have important things to do, this is a great day to try and get them started. If you can, you're more, most likely to get the support and protection that you need at this time and only during this time. Um, for other things like world events and stuff, mark your calendars and let's see what happens under the auspices of Venus in, in the heart of the sun or Cosimi the sun during this eclipse time because June 3rd is only two days from June 5th. So whatever is promised under this eclipse, we should see any, any real positive benefits coming through on June 3rd. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out uh, as much as you are. For the rest of you, in terms of dealing with this, again, we've got a T-square, right, with Mars and Neptune and Pisces with this eclipse. And Neptune and Pisces rule things that multiply, things that infiltrate, things that poison, things that are hard to identify and harder to catch, right? Because Neptune is the fog. Have you ever tried to catch the fog? Like you're, you're doing this, right? And you can't quite get it in your hand. So fog, uh, mist, poison, gases, excess, things that are too much of something. And with Mars on top of Neptune like that, this is not helped. Mars gives energy to that Neptune, that overwhelmingly strong Neptune. So Neptune in Pisces gives us saints and sinners. So we get saints of, of literally canonization uh, levels, right? The Jesus Christ levels. Um, and we also get sinners uh, in terms of the devil's handmaidens sort of things, if you believe in that sort of stuff. Um, and with Mars there, it energizes it and really pushes it into awareness. So this Mars, it, this T-square is confusing enough, and it's going to be, mm, it's going to be a lot of what it is. But this Mars here with Neptune activating this T-square is what really ignites the dynamite stick. I wouldn't necessarily look for things to blow up. However, I would look for a, 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 a mushroom effect. That's the best way to describe it, right? So this um, mushroom effect occurring because Mars is with Neptune. So things like viruses, which are classically Neptune and classically Pisces, poisons, water, flooding, overwhelming amounts of things, whether it's an, a flood of uh, solid earth, like in an avalanche, or it is a, a flood or excess amount of air, like in hurricanes or tornadoes, or an excess of water, like tsunami, or an excess of fire, like a, a volcanic explosion. All of these things come under the auspices of Neptune and Pisces, and with Mars there, that's definitely going to activate it, and as part of the eclipse, we can certainly expect some fun stuff. Now, in your personal life, <laughs> 
in your personal life, which I'm sure this is what most of you are really concerned about because that's the only thing we can control right now for the most part. One of the things that you can do is look at two things, two things. I need a different color pen here. The first thing you're going to do is look at whatever house you carry Mars and Neptune in. So if you know where your your birth time is, and you've got a wheel, and you've got a time of birth with houses set up, Mars and Neptune at these degrees, 15 to 20, look where those degrees sit in your natal chart. This is going to show you where you're going to have the most flooding, air quotes, right? Flooding occurring. So there's going to be a lot of energy and overwhelming excess of activity going into that house. So classic example, or not classic, but some examples. For instance, um, let's say you have Mars, Neptune, and Pisces in the eighth house, right? You're carrying it in your eighth. You may find yourself having a flood of either debt or support or both simultaneously um, because Neptune also represents losses, okay? Because it's the, the it, anyway, I can't, I, I can't make this video too long. So uh, Mars and Neptune could open up uh, holes where it occurs and either invite things in or let things out or both at the same time. So in the eighth house, other people support taxes, insurance. There may be issues with getting financial support from other people or owing other people and giving them financial support. Whatever it is, it's going to be exaggerated and amplified. If you have Mars, Neptune at 1520 Pisces in your 11th house, uh, as another example, um, you may find that this particular eclipse right, brings you all sorts of bizarre and unexpected random experiences and certainly a whole slew of new people in your life because the 11th house also rules strangers, friends, acquaintances, large groups of people. So there may be more uh, flooded activity right, extreme flooded activity with communities at large um, and being pulled into and or having them pour into your life. If you have, as an, another example, Mars, Neptune at 1520 in your first house, you may be experiencing a flood of things that affect the physical body or your in personal direct health. So heightened allergy sensitivity is possible at this time, excess conditions of excess where too much fluid is involved. It's also possible at this time, so bloating, uh, fluid in the lungs, fluid in the heart, high blood pressure, too much fluid, right? Also, again, Mars Neptune is a point of loss, so it could be one of these things where heightened allergy would certainly cause a loss in activity, um, or it could be uh, you getting lost. <laughs> Um, and or misplacing things, like things that are very vital and important to you that identify you, like your driver's license, your passport, things of that, that your personal items like cell phone, computer, these things may also be something that, that is a point of loss during this time. Um, so this is the kind of thing we're, we're looking at with this planetary combination as part of this eclipse occurring. Now the other thing you can do is look at the exact opposite house, which in this case would be Virgo. Right? So looking at the Virgo, Virgo represents the portal or the opening for a T-square where we can let some of the pressure out. So if you look at where Virgo is placed in your chart, you might find that these are also areas that are equally disrupted or equally supported. It's hard to say how it's going to play out. Um, but these two points on the thing are, are mirrors of each other. So uh, on one side, same as the other. The difference is on this side, it's more expected because we can visibly see it coming. It's like the train coming down the track. We can see it coming. Now, uh, with that said, if you don't know your time of birth and you don't have a proper wheel set up, do not feel discouraged because what the thing that is the more important than the houses themselves, and you, you have to remember this, the thing that is more important than the houses themselves are the planets, right? So this, these wheel with all the houses, right? This just gives us rooms in a house. But these planets are the structure that builds the house. This is the timber, the roof, the basement, the wood. 
So the planets tell the story, not the houses. So if you don't know where in what house this, this particular combination of Mars and Neptune is occurring, what I want you to do is look in your chart for planets between the degrees of 13 and 23 Pisces or, let me go over here, or the other mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius. Right, so it's Pisces is where this is getting kicked off, and we want to look for Sagittarius, Virgo, and Gemini all at 15 to 20, or add an extra couple degrees to be on the safe side. Okay, so look in your chart for planets in any of these signs at these degrees or given an extra couple degrees, but no more than two or three degrees on either side of this. You will also be feeling this, but specifically, this is where it's really going to show itself. So, um, as an example, right, if you have planets at 15 to 20 degrees Sagittarius, you are part of this eclipse. You're, you're feeling it. So you're going to get hammered no matter which way you go about it. If you have planets at 15 to 20 Gemini, again, you're part of this eclipse. And 15 to 20 Pisces, again, part of this eclipse. So if you have planets sitting on these placements, you're going to feel it. There's some major, major changes in your life coming down the pike that you have no way of controlling. All The best you can do is literally navigate it and manage it uh, as best you can. So your best option at this point, if you have planets sitting on these degrees, is to be prepared with a recovery plan because life's about to change in a huge way, honey. Oh my God. The only exception to this is Virgo, right? So if you have planets at 15 to 20 Virgo, you're not sitting directly on these degrees, or, and specifically those planets. If you have planets at Virgo, and it's part of this T-square constellation we're looking at, you're going to feel it, but in a slightly different way. What may be happening is because with these planets, when you have planets sitting on these planets, you are part of this process. You are an agent of change in your own life. So people who are having planets sitting at these things, they have participated in a process um, that they'll be able to, to go backwards and track to see how they've helped create these situations. I mean, nothing in our life occurs without our participation, right? Um, People with planets in Virgo sitting in this empty leg of the T-square, may f this may be the one time where they feel like they've literally kind of been blindsided. So all of these things this T-square eclipse is promising may land on your doorstep without necessarily your active participation in it. So you may be the recipient of fateful changes that you could not possibly have seen coming um, or participated in or, you know, uh, coordinated with or, or all this sort of stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Now, the other thing that may happen is if you have planets in Virgo and you've got this T-square going on, you may actually be watching other people go through this. So you may be in a catalyst or an instrument of change for other people. So that will be interesting to watch too. It's hard to say how this will play out exactly because this is a general horoscope for everyone. Um, and without your individual chart in front of me looking at specifically your individual planets and or houses, uh, but planets more so, it's very difficult to pinpoint how this might play out and what this, or make predictions about what this could possibly be. But this is uh, the eclipse we are under. Remember, June 3rd is our important day, and this is not a this is not a fantastic, uh, happy-go-lucky kind of eclipse, but it is a dynamic one, and uh, this eclipse promises that we can make some major groundbreaking change uh, and and t turning corners, as it were, uh, with this energy and momentum behind us. So it's not bad. We just have to use this energy constructively in our lives and put it to use. And you'll feel it right now. You're going to feel the rumbling in your 
personal life and your psyche, like something needs to change. You're feeling it. So with that, go with that feeling. Don't bury it. Don't ignore it. Don't walk away from it. Go with it and find constructive ways to make change happen because this is all about growth and progress. And remember, this particular eclipse, even though it seems kind of minor, you know, compared to the next one, uh, it's actually huge. This is huge. There's some hidden aspects in here. And you're an astrologer. You know how to do this. Um, there's some hidden aspects in here that make this more powerful than first inspection would tell us. So that is our June 5th full moon eclipse, which is now going to lead us to our next major event, which is going to be Mercury stationing retrograde. And that will be June 18th. So it looks like between June 5th and June 18th, this is a long couple of weeks of nothing happening. And that's not true. There's a lot happening. But remember, when we talk about big, major uh, shakeups like this, right, you're going to need some time to recover and to put the house back in order. So going from June 5th to June 18th is not so unreasonable, all things considered. We need time for the dust to settle and for things to die down before we move on to the next major event, which is going to be here, Mercury Station.